Would please come on in and have a seat and we can get started. We want to welcome everyone here today on a, on a very special day on our Celebration Sunday. We're glad that you're here, especially if you're visiting with us. Thank you for being here. If you would at this time take the uh, Friendship register, register from the pew and pass it down the aisle so that we can have a record of everyone's attendance. We come together here on the first day of the week to worship the Lord and uh, we hope that we can have a worship service in accordance with His will. Would you bow with me as we begin our service together? Father, thank you for the opportunity that we have today to come together to worship you, to build, our, uh, build one another up, and to sing songs of praise and to give of our means. Father, we pray that as we enter into our service together, we can put aside the cares of the world and concentrate on the things that are important. And Father, thank you for this congregation that meets here, and we pray that you will continue to be with us and to bless us through all things. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite everyone to join in our song service this morning, lifting our voices and songs of praise to our Lord in heaven. You are my strength when I am free. You are my strength when I am free. You are my all in
bow and pray with me. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Lord's Day that you have given us that we might come together as brothers and sisters united in faith, that we might come to worship you, the one and true God. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings upon this congregation today as we look inward to ourselves, as we look at our brotherly and sisterly relationships. Heavenly Father, as we learn about how we are connected today, we ask that we would evaluate ourselves and ask ourselves, are we doing what we should be doing as God's family? Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings upon Brother Greg today as he ministers to us from the word of life. That those things that he is prepared to say will reach our ears and we would listen as humble servants of you. That through your minister we would hear the word of God. Heavenly Father, we come to you today on what we have called Connection Sunday. Let us always be mindful of what truly connects us which is the blood of Jesus Christ, where he said, I am the vine and ye are the branches. Heavenly Father, let us understand that we are connected through his blood. And when we are not connected, we are, we are no longer connected. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would accept our worship today, that we be mindful on your son's sacrifice and what he did for us. And as we go throughout lives, we would live in a way that you would be honored that we are called your servants. And more importantly, that we are honored to be called your children. Heavenly Father, forgive us where we fail in these attempts. Have, other, have our brothers and sisters come to our aid that we might be able to Stand in your presence one day and hear those good and faithful words. Enter in, thou good and faithful servant. This is our prayer in your son's name. Amen. Invitation song was smiling this morning following the lesson. I had to run a couple words together there. But just as I am, I come broken. I ask you to please stand at this time, if you're capable, to sing these two songs before our lesson this morning. I
I'll be reading from Romans chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. Romans chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heir, heir of, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with Him in order that we may also be glorified with Him. Good morning. Thank you for being here today on a very great day for no other reason than it's the Lord's Day. A day that we get to come together and study together and worship together. Pray together, just be together. But on this particular day, it is uh, a little bit more special with some things we have going on. We're calling this Connection Sunday, and I hope that you will take advantage of this day for what is intended, and that is for us to get to know each other a little bit better, for us to get a little more connected. Uh, we're going to have some special things going on, one of those being after services uh, this morning. We're going to recognize and honor uh, those new families uh, that have come to us in the last few years. Hope that you will uh, greet them and, and be here for that. And then, of course, we're going to have a, a meal together, be able to visit with one another and share with one another in a service this afternoon. I hope that you will certainly take advantage of that. If you're visiting with us this morning, welcome. Hope that you'll come back and be a part any and every opportunity that you have. Connections is uh, what we're going to talk about today. Uh, connections means a lot of things to a lot of different people. I want you to think, if you will, for a moment, the various ways in which you are connected in the world today. Think about the, um, the people in your life, the folks with whom you come into contact every day. Now, there may be all kinds of different ways. It may be um, fellow workers, employees, maybe classmates, your family, maybe uh, civic groups, uh, maybe parents, maybe children. Think about, if you will, in your life on a daily basis, how many different kinds of people and how many different people you, you connect with on a daily basis. Going to Walmart, going to Walden's, going to the grocery store, Piggly Wiggly, wherever it may be. And then it gets really beyond that in the world in which we live today because not only do we have these personal connections, not only do we have these people that we see kind of on a semi-regular basis, but when you get into the digital aspect of it, it's almost infinite. Think about the many connections that we have in the world today. Do you want to know what's going on in the world thousands of miles away? What do you do? Pick on a few buttons, right? And you know. Things that once took sometimes days, weeks, and months for us to find out about, now we know almost instantaneously. Think about the ways that we are connected with computers and pagers and, and cell phones. Think about the social media aspects, whether it be Facebook or, or Twitter or Snapchat or Instagram or, or whatever the case may be. All the different ways that we are connected. The way that we're able to, to keep in contact with people. How that we can get on our computer and we can send an email or we can send a text message or maybe we can, we can FaceTime or something like that with people that are miles away. We stay connected. Once all of this started, I was able to connect with some of my, my old classmates, both from high school and from college. And we, we keep in contact at least somewhat through this way. When you think about the world in which we live today, is it not full of connections? Connections are everywhere. But here's the interesting point. Even though, even though we have all of these opportunities for connections, and by definition we would say we are connected all of these different ways, studies and research are showing that we may be the most disconnected and isolated people to ever walk the face of the earth. You see... Connection has different meanings. We're connected in a lot of different ways on a superficial level. But what the research is finding is that a lot of these connections are often having a detrimental effect because we're not connecting with real people and real relationships. 
We're more like ships passing in the night. We have connections on a certain level, but we're really missing things on a different level. So this morning and this afternoon, we want to talk about connections. And one of the things, one of the reasons we're doing what we're doing today is there has been a realization that we're not as connected as we need to be. This happens all over the world, all over the state, all over churches, especially in a place like Boonville, where we're a little larger than other places. It's hard to be connected. One of the, one of the things I hear on a regular basis is, Greg, we just don't know each other. I know that that person attends... And I know a little bit about them, but we don't really know each other. We're not, we're not, they don't use the word connected, but we're not really connected. We don't, we don't know people the way that we used to. There's been a lot of new people that have come in, and I don't know who they are. Or somebody else will say, you know, I've been attending here for a few years, but I still don't know these folks that have been here forever. And so, our attempt is to become more connected. And by the way, I want to challenge you. We need your help. I want you to be thinking about some ways that this congregation can become more connected. I want you to be thinking about some ways that we can get to know each other better. What, what are your ideas? What do you think we need to do? How is it that we can be a more connected congregation, a more connected church? You got those ideas? Share them with me. Share them with one of the elders. Now share them with somebody. And let's challenge ourselves to make sure that, that we can be uh, more connected as we go through life together. I'm thankful for this day. I'm thankful for, for the idea. I think it's a great idea for us to honor and recognize uh, those new folks that have come along, but also for us to be reminded of the need for us to connect. So for our lesson this morning, I hope you'll keep your Bibles open there to the book of Romans. We're actually going to go back to that passage several times this morning. But I want us to think about three important connections. Three important connections. And we start with perhaps the most important connection, and that is the connection to God. Of all the things and of all the people and all the things that we think about in our life for which we need to be connected, none is of greater importance than our connection to God. Chris talked about that in his prayer, being the great connection, realizing that uh, Jesus is the vine, we are the branches, and so on. So how are we connected to God? Well, first of all, think about the fact that we are adopted as children. Our key word here is adopted. The reason we're connected to God is because He has chosen to adopt us. We are adopted as children. This is the passage that Ben read for us just a few moments ago, where the, the writer here, Paul, is saying, the Spirit bears witness with our spirit when we are children of God, and if children, then heirs. We are children of God. We are adopted. He has made it possible for us to be His children. One of the greatest blessings we have in life is the fact that we are children of God. We are connected to God this way. But as children, we're also heirs. That in addition to being the children of God, we are connected in the sense that we have that inheritance waiting for us. The same passage here. We are children of God, and if children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God. Fellow heirs of Christ. Provided we suffer with Him in order that we may be glorified with Him. God saw fit to connect himself with mankind. When man sinned in the garden, there was a separation that took place. A rift, if you will, in the connection. But God said, I am going to provide a way back. I am going to provide reconciliation. I am going to provide that connection back for you. I am going to allow you to be connected. And folks, if you're not connected to God this morning, then you're missing out on one of the greatest blessings that we ever have. So we are adopted as children. We are adopted as heirs. But we are adopted at baptism. You see, God doesn't force us to be His children. God doesn't force us to be His heirs. He gives us that option. He gives us that choice. He says, this is what I want you to be, but I'm not going to make you do it. Galatians 3, verse 27. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Some of the translations say, you've been clothed with Christ. How are we clothed with Christ? How do we put on, or how do we be His children? How do we be heirs with Him? Paul tells the Galatians, it's as many as you as were baptized into Christ. That's when that takes place. Romans 6, 1-4. through 4. Paul says, don't you know 
Don't you know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? We were buried with Him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too may walk in unison of life. That's when the connection takes place. That's when we have what God offers for us. Acts 2.47. This is after Peter had preached this great sermon. After they had said, what do we have to do? After Peter had said, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. We find that the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. On a connection Sunday such as this, Please don't leave here this morning without being connected to God. Please don't leave here this morning having not yet been immersed into Christ for the goodness of your sins to walk that newness of life. You see, you may have all kinds of connections in the world today, but if you're not connected to God, you're missing out on the most important connection. Connection to God. But then let's talk next about our connection to each other, which is kind of the gist of what we're going on today. When we think about our connection to each other, I hope you understand. I, I don't think I'm saying anything that's, that's, uh, that, that, that's that big of a deal, strange to you. The fact that we need relationships. You see, what the statistics are showing is that in a very connected world, we're disconnected when it comes to real relationships with people. And the fact of the matter is, we need relationships. So how are we connected to each other? What are some ways in which we find ourselves connected today? Well, first of all, we're connected by faith, right? Go back to the passage in Romans chapter 8. Paul says it's, it's this connection that you have, your children together. He talks about the connection to God as being His children, but we're all children. As children of God, we are connected to Him by faith. Because of our belief, because of our desire to serve Him, because of our desire to worship Him, we have a connection by faith. And one of the amazing things is there are Christians meeting this morning all over the world. We've never even met, do not know, but we're connected by faith. We had almost a thousand young folks that arise this past week that on Friday morning went different places, Texas, Virginia, Michigan, all over the South. May not see each other again for another year, but the connection is there not because of horizons, but because of our faith. Because of the faith that we have. We're connected by family. We're connected by family. Notice again the passage in Romans 8, where the Bible talks about us being heirs, us being children, us being family. Now think, think about that for just a moment. What does it mean to be connected as family? Think about your physical family for a moment. What are you willing to do for your physical family? Just about anything, right? What do you share with your physical family? Just about anything, right? What does family do? You know, it's funny growing up. My brother and my sister and I, sometimes we got along like perfect little angels and other times we were more like perfect little demons. We had our share of fights and fusses. We'd get mad at each other and be aggravated at one another. And even as young adults, we had spats from here and there. Do you know, I, I could say that to my brother or to my sister or whatever, but if somebody else talks about my family, then it's different, right? Because we're going to defend family. We're going to make sure that, that, that family is taken care of. Think about our relationships with our physical family and, and put that over with our spiritual family. Do we have the, that same sort of desire and love to, to care, know what's going on? Romans twelve fifteen. we rejoice with those who rejoice. We weep with those who weep. You see, part of being family is being connected, and, and I'm afraid that's where somewhere around it, it's got broken down that we don't know family as much as we need to, that we're not connected to family as much as perhaps we should be. Yet we sing the song, and what a great song it is about God's family, that we're part of the family that's been born again. We're part of the family whose love knows no end. For Jesus has saved us and made us His own. Now we're part of the family that's on its way home. When a brother meets sorrow, we all feel his grief. When he's passed through the valley, we all feel relief. 
together in sunshine, together in rain, together in victory through His precious name. And though some go before us, we'll all meet again, just inside the city when we enter in. There'll be no parting with Jesus will be together forever, God's family. Sometimes we laugh together, and sometimes we cry. Sometimes we share together heartaches and sighs. Sometimes we dream together of how it will be when we all get to heaven, God's family. You see, our connection as family is we're on this journey together. We struggle together. We face defeat together. We face victory together. But we're in it together because we're family. We're connected by fellowship. You see, people need people. When you look at what happened over in Acts chapter 2, after those folks were baptized, they became a part of the Lord's church, we find that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of prayer, bread and prayers. We find that they were together. All who believed were together, had things in common. They were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as had need. Day by day, attend the temple together and breaking bread in their home. They received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. See, all of that says they were doing things what? Together. They spent time together in fellowship and enjoying each other's company and strengthening each other and helping each other. We're connected next by function. By function. If you look over at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you'll see what I'm talking about with function. This is the place where Paul talks about the body. And he notes that there is one body but many members, and we're all part of that. But verse 14, he says, the body does not consist of one member, but of many together. He uses a couple illustrations here. If the foot says, because I'm not a hand, do I not belong to the body? Well, no, that would make it not part of the body. But what if the ear says, because I'm not the eye, does, I don't belong to the body. Is that true? Well, no. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell? But God has arranged the members of the body as He chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. Then He says, then the eye can't say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary... The parts of the body that seem to be weaker and indispensable, those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty. See, he goes on to talk about the fact that there's not to be division in the body. We're to work together because we are connected by function. Because you and I have a function. You and I have talents to contribute. A, a, a body cannot function with just a few of those. A congregation cannot function with just a few of those. Again, need your help. I'm convinced there's a lot of talents, there's a lot of abilities, there's a lot of things out there sitting among you in the pew that's not been tapped into. But if we're connected in function, then we're going we're to provide those gifts, we're going to provide those things that make the Lord's church be the very best it can be. Connected by function. The reason we're connected by all of these things is so that we are not a failure. I'm afraid, and it's often very unintentional, that we fail at connection. You see, we don't take the time to get to know people and what they're thinking. I confess to you this morning that often I have failed miserably as a minister to you and not realizing the hurt that you were going through, not realizing the, the difficulty that you may be facing in your life. So much easier just to say hi, how you're doing, and keep on going than to really connect with people and understand the difficulties, the terrible things, the, the emotional turmoil that people may be going through. And I promise to try to do better. I hope you'll help me with that. So that we can truly lean on each other and help each other through what may be difficult times. I shared this on Facebook a few weeks ago. Some of you, I'm sure, read it then. Uh, I want to share it with you now. It's called Shoes in Church. I showered and shaved, I adjusted my tie. I got there and sat in a pew just in time. 
Bowing my head in prayer as I closed my eyes, I saw the shoe of the man next to me touching my own, I sighed. With plenty of room on either side, I thought, why would our souls touch? It bothered me, his shoe touching mine, but it didn't bother him much. A prayer began, our father, I thought, this man with the shoes has no pride. They're dusty, worn, and scratched. Even worse, there are holes on the side. Thank you for blessing, the prayer went on. The shoe man said a quiet amen. I tried to focus on the prayer, but my thoughts were on his shoes again. Are we supposed to look our best when walking through that door? Well, this certainly isn't, I thought, glancing toward the floor. Then the prayer was ended and the songs of praise began. The shoe man was certainly loud, something proud, sounding proud as he sang. His voice lifted the rafters. His hands were raised high. The Lord could surely hear the shoe man's voice from the sky. It was time for the offering, and what I threw in was steep. I watched as the shoe man reached into his pocket so deep. I saw what was pulled out, what the shoe man put in. Then I heard a soft clink as when silver hits tin. The sermon really bored me to tears, and that's no lie. It was the same for the shoe man, for tears fell from his eyes. At the end of the service, as is the custom here, we must greet new visitors and show them all good cheer. But I felt moved somehow and wanted to meet the shoe man, so after the closing prayer, I reached over and shook his hand. He was old and his skin was dark and his hair was truly a mess, but I thanked him for coming, for being our guest. He said, my name's Charlie. I'm glad to meet you, my friend. There were tears in his eyes, but he had a large, wide grin. Let me explain, he said, wiping tears from his eyes. I've been coming here for months, and you're the first to say hi. I know that my appearance is not like all the rest, but I really do try to always look my best. I always clean and polish my shoes before my very long walk. By the time I get here, they're dirty and dusty like chalk. My heart filled with pain, and I swallowed to hide my tears as he continued to apologize for daring to sit so near. He said, when I get here, I know I must look a sight, but I thought if I could touch you, then maybe our souls might unite. I was silent for a moment, knowing whatever was said would pale in comparison. I spoke from my heart, not from my head. Oh, you've touched me, I said, and taught me in part that the best of any man is what is found in his heart. The rest, I thought, this shoe man will never know just how thankful I really am that his dirty old shoe touched my soul. I wonder, I wonder how many times that story could be repeated. Similar story to here where folks come and, and we don't, we don't know what's going on. We make judgment about appearances. We make judgment about attitudes. We make judgment about all these things. And, and the fact of the matter is, we don't know what these people are going through and how difficult life may be at that time. This last week, we spent at Horizons. Um, the theme was broken, and I've got to admit that over this past week, as I was trying to put this together, I was... Um, really questioning my decision to say July 8th would be a good day for Connection Sunday. Uh, I thought maybe we should have waited another week, given me another week to prepare. I thought maybe this wasn't a good time. I'm trying to get this done, and I'm, I'm not adequately prepared, and I've got to do all this. But instead what happened is a lot of things that at Horizons prepared me for this week. Because you see, the theme was broken, and this was a theme that the kids picked. Uh, they were allowed to choose from several topics, and they said, we want it to be on Broken. Why would they choose that? Because there are a lot of folks broken. A lot of folks broken. When we started on Sunday night, I wondered, how is this going to go? Are these kids going to open up? Is this just going to be a download of information? But what we quickly found out is that, that these young folks were more than ready to quickly say, I'm broken. I need help. Taught a class, um, the young uh, speaking class for the older campers. 
uh, the ones that were going to speak in the, the camper led devotional on Thursday and heard some, some great lessons and heard one kid up and kid get up and talk about uh, the fact that he found out after three months he was being cyber bullied. Someone had created a false account and was saying all kinds of terrible things about him and how that broke him. Had another kid get up and talk about how that when his folks announced that they were divorcing, how that that broke him and that was the worst night of his life. But how that because of the fact that his dad remarried a Christian woman that took him to church, that through that he became a Christian and he was now grateful for all of that. The guy that was cyberbullied talked about how he'd worked through that brokenness and how it made him a better man. Another class I taught was a leadership class and we talked about um, the laws of leadership by Maxwell and tried to relate them to church and, and we talked about the law of the inner circle which basically says the folks that are around you, they're the ones that are, that are the closest to you and have the most influence and and so we, we related that to friendship and it's trying to encourage these young people to, to be careful about the friends they choose and, and make sure you have friends around you that are going to encourage you and that are going to help you go to heaven instead of keeping you from going to heaven. And we talked all about this, this inner circle and, and finally one kid in the back raised his hand and I said, yes. And he said, what if you don't have an inner circle? I didn't know what to say. He said, I don't, I don't have an inner circle. I don't have anybody. I, there, there's, there's no one there. You see, I suspect that in this audience this morning, there's a lot of folks broken to different degrees. A lot of people struggling with a lot of different things. And if we're really the church that God wants us to be, we're going to help mend those broken people. Not ignore them. Not wish they'd go away. And not just hope that we don't find out about it. See, God's in the business of mending broken people. And if we're in His church, we're to be in that business too. See, we need to be connected so that we're not a failure. So that, that we do what God wants us to do. We need to know people because we need people. We need to know people because we need people. We can't go through this by ourselves. Paul says in Philippians 2 to look out for the interest of others. To put others before you. To think about what they're going through. To think about what their interests are. To think about how you can serve them in a great way. One of the other laws we talked about in that leadership class was the law of magnetism. And the law of magnetism basically says that you're going to attract people to you that are like you. And we find that to be true, right? There are those of us that are closer friends because of the interests we share, because of where we were raised and all sorts of different things. Magnetism, we, we, it naturally happens that we draw people to us that are like us. Okay, what that means to me in the church is that we have to be very intentional to get connected with people not like us. You see, those that are like us, it's easy to get connected to them, but what about all the folks that aren't like us? What about folks that, that come from varying backgrounds, from come from different situations? We've got to be intentional if we want to be connected to them. So what does connection look like? What does connection look like? I'm going to try to show a video. I hope it works. Some of you saw it on Facebook. It's a group of guys in Farrell Hall dorm where I've been for years, one of the, the dorm dads there. This is on the last night of Horizons, but what I want you to think about is on Sunday night of Horizons, I talked to this same group of folks. These, these young men that had just moved in, they didn't know each other. They didn't know what was going to happen, some of them. Some of them knew each other. They weren't complete strangers. But as a whole, about 100, and, I think there's 148 in their dorm. Folks that didn't know each other. But on the last night, on the last night, after spending some time together and being connected, this is what happened. I
But what I saw was a group of young men, roughly 13, 14, 15 years old, that didn't know each other, that have all the awkwardness that 13, 14, 15 year old men have, but that have spent time together, studying together, praying together, singing together every night. And on this last night, they felt connected enough with one another that they, some of them not knowing each other very well, felt comfortable putting their arms around each other, getting in circles and singing, I Come Broken. To me, that was a powerful testimony of what God can do in the lives of people. And to me, that gives me hope that we can have similar things in the church today. That we can rally around each other, put our arms around each other, and even in our weak weakness, share with one another as we move toward victory. One final connection quickly, and the, the, the lesson will be yours. Our connection to the world, we have to acknowledge this. We acknowledge, first of all, that a world connection can be negative. Jesus talks about this in John 15, 18, and 19. The fact that you have to be careful about the world, how dangerous it is. John talks about it in 1 John 2, 15 through 17, where he says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. So we have to be careful of the world. The world can influence us in a negative way. That's a connection we have to be aware of and make sure it doesn't happen. Because our connection to the world should be positive. You see, instead of the world affecting us in a negative way, we need to be affecting it in a positive way. That's what Jesus said in John 17, 14 through 19. He says, I've given them your word, and the world has hated them because they're not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They're not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. So sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I've sent them into the world. We don't hide. We don't cower. We go into the world and we make a connection. We make a difference. We are the connection between people and God. I should never forget this. So many people are looking to us and toward us to find that connection. Another law that we discussed in the leadership class was law of buy-in. Law of buy-in basically says you've got to get people to buy into you as a leader before they'll buy into your vision. The message that we have is much greater than the messenger. But, if we want people to buy in to how great it is to be children of God, then we've got to act like children of God. Then they've got to buy into us. They can't see us saying one thing and doing something else. They can't see us claiming to be different from the world when we're not any different from the world. So we have a great responsibility in our connection to the world. We get folks to buy into us and we point them to God. We point them to our Savior. We point them to salvation. Theme for the year is abounding in the work of the Lord. My challenge is that as we abound in the work of the Lord, that we do so through connections. Matter of fact, I'm not sure we can abound in the work of the Lord without connections. This morning as we sing the song of encouragement, think about your connections. I want to challenge you to be more connected to one another, to be connected to the world in a positive way, but more than anything, be connected to God. This morning, if you're not a Christian, make today the, one, the time you become one. If you've, if you've allowed that connection with God to be disconnected, to be cut off, Make today the day that, that you reconnect, that you restore that relationship you have with Him. If we can assist you this morning anyway, please come as we stand and as we sing.
step of the way. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Take out your songbook, turn to number 113. Sing a few songs to get ready for the baptism. 113, His Grace Reaches Me. <clears throat> Deeper than the ocean.
494. Ella, do you believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes. I believe that's true. Please make that decision. And we'll baptize you for the forgiveness of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, happy day that fixed my choice. On Thee, my Savior and my God, well may this glowing heart rejoice and tell its raptures all abroad. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch and pray and live sing every day. Happy day, happy day.
Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for this opportunity that you've given us to come here to learn more about your word. We thank you so very much for this opportunity to give us to come around this table to commemorate your son's death and resurrection. We thank you so much for this bread that represents your son's broken body that he gave for us. We hope that we will take it in a manner that is well-pleasing to you. In Christ's name, amen. Father, in like manner we come asking thy blessings on this fruit of the vine that to us, the Christian, represents the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, help us to understand that without him being willing to die on the cross and give his blood, that without this blood we could not be saved. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.
The Lord's Supper being concluded, we now have an opportunity to give back what we've been in charge of. Would you pray with me, please? Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, so much for the many blessings that you bestow upon us each and every day. We thank you for the for the life that you have given us. We thank you for the opportunity to make a living and support our wives and our families. We know that we uh, own nothing, that you have given us everything that we have, and we hope that we would give an account of that one day. We hope that we will give back in a cheerful manner. In Christ's name, amen. Good morning. We had 362 in worship this morning. We had 256 in Sunday school. 100% was the third grade. They are a gospel meeting at West Corinth, July the 11th through the 15th, Rusty Hills is the preacher. Joan Mormon is having a biopsy tomorrow. Please keep her in our prayers. The family of James and Eloise Loveless would like to invite you to celebrate their 65 wedding anniversary on the 15th, next Sunday at 2 o'clock, at the Berea Church of Christ. And then, here we go. The Golden Circle. Their luncheon is this Tuesday. And they're going to, the bus is going to leave at 11.15. And they're going to the Rib Shack in Tupelo. This Tuesday, Rib Shack, Tupelo. 11.15, red shirts. Red. Can't go if you don't wear red. Red shirts. Also, real quick, I've got to tell this story. I've just sort of found this out. I understand the Pollocks went to eat lunch a few Sundays ago with a couple. And as they were preparing the last little bit to eat... Greg was talking to their little boy in the living room, and Greg asked him, says, what are we going to, what are we eating for lunch? The little boy replied, goat. Greg says, something's up. We're not going to have goat. So Greg starts talking to him about it. And he says, yes, we're going to have goat. As I got up this morning and headed into the kitchen, I heard them say, we just was to have the old goat for lunch. <laughs> Guy says, we're not having goat for lunch today. We're going to have chicken. Greg, you're all right. If you will, when I close for prayer, 
Stay seated for just a few minutes, please. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this day you give us, for this opportunity to study more about thee for this Lord's Day. We help us to be more connected to you, help us be more connected to each other. Forgive us when we fail thee, in Christ's name we pray, amen. I have a, uh, I've got Greg's mic on, so if you can turn that on for me, appreciate it. So this is uh, Connection Sunday, and I know for some of you, uh, we're connecting with your inner clock at this moment because you've looked down and noticed that uh, it's 11.50, but that should be okay because we're going to feed you all in just a moment, all right? So you don't have to worry about your booth being filled up or, you know, something like that. We'll feed you. Don't worry about it. Well, we'll be coming back at 1 for our second service, uh, so make sure that you don't forget that as well. I don't know who came up with this day. Um, matter of fact, it doesn't matter who came up with this day, but I really appreciate the idea of this day, and I appreciate uh, Dale Kendrick and his work in making sure that we try to connect with as many new families as we, we've had. And i got to give... For some of these names I'm going to call out, you're going to say, they've been here for three years, Aaron. Why in the world are we just now recognizing them? But we had to start somewhere. And uh, since this is the first time we've done this, we had to start somewhere. And so we decided, so we don't leave anybody out, uh, we'll make sure we just start with the directory. Because I know y'all read that all the time, right? And you go through there. Uh, so we'll just start when the directory was done in 2015. And now we will introduce new families. So I apologize. I've been asked. Uh, to recognize these families, and I, I say I apologize, I shouldn't have said that, but there's a lot of families we're going to recognize today. So bear with me. But I think this is important. And I think as we continue to do this year over year, um, I think it'll be very, very, very beneficial. So thanks to Dale for getting all this. If we left somebody out, of course we didn't mean to. Uh, we'll, we'll do better next year. Okay. So as I call these individuals' names, we want you to stand up very quickly. Uh, Dale apparently asked them to give them a little bit of something about themselves, uh, so I'll try to say that. Uh, make sure you put your eyes on these folks and remember their names. There'll be a test at 1 o'clock. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we mostly know these individuals anyway, so we'll start with the Hodgins. I don't think they're here. Lisa, are you here? Uh, they're not here. Uh, Stephen and Lisa Hodgins, they come to us for, from Tennessee. Uh, of course, we know Stephen as our educational director who just started in part-time youth minister. Uh, but Lisa is a certified sleep technician, uh, and he's out preaching in Alabama uh, this week or today. But we do have Kelsey. Kelsey, are you here? She just left? All right. So Kelsey uh, is their daughter. Again, she came from uh, Tennessee as well. But what you might not know about Kelsey is she is a culinary, I hope I said that right, artist. She loves to bake, and she works in Crave uh, in Tupelo. Michelle Barragona, Owen Sparks. Now, Michelle was raised here, so this is, uh, no, she's not new to us. Of course, their daughter uh, is with them. Um, sorry, Annalise. Uh, Michelle is administration, in administration at Northeast Mississippi Community College, and Owen is employed at Tupelo Hardware, so thank you. Wades, are y'all here? Y'all normally sitting in the back? Uh, there we go. Now listen here, Allie, you have to stand up too. Allie, you have to stand up. There she is, all right. So we do have at least Allison and Allie here, but we have Tom and Allison Wade. Their children are Zoe, 3, uh, Emily Mann, 12, Allie Mann, 18. Uh, they come to us from the Chapman congregation. Tom is a logger. Uh, he actually went to school with him at Mississippi State. Allison is a teacher. Uh, Allie is in cosmetology school. Uh, one interesting fact is that we may not know is Tom's grandfather helped establish Pine Bell Children's Home. I didn't know that. Um, David and Lisa Horn, where are y'all? Y'all here today? I think we all know David and Lisa. Uh, David is a nursing home administration administrator. Lisa is a home health registered nurse. All right, Amy Lauderdale, are you here? Well, not doing very good on my check marks here, the people standing up. Uh, she's from Oxford. She's a retired teacher. Jason Hall in the back. All right, there he is. Um, we know Jason. He's married to Mary. Uh, married to Mary. Uh, interesting, though, that we all know that we're very proud of is their first child is coming in December. 
Um, so very, uh, he's also a new convert, as most of us know. Misty Duncan, Hannah, been here a while with her children. Where are you, Briley and Braden? Braden, stand up. You should stand up with your mama. All right. They're from Pontotoc. They've been worshiping with us for several years now. Uh, Misty works in insurance, and I have to say this, and I'm really sorry. She put on this note, and Misty, we've got to work on this. One of her interesting points is she's the niece of Lloyd and J.T. Beard. I could have thought of a million things to say. <laughs> Putting on here that I'm kin to J.T. and Lloyd would not be on my list of things. All right, Donnie and Kim, would you please stand up in the back? Donnie and Kim Fowler from the West Corinth Church of Christ. Donnie is a quality engineer. And Kim, she didn't write this, but I'm putting this. Kim is one of the best note writers and givers that we probably have here in this congregation. And many of you probably have received a note from her. I have received three since she started worshiping you. So uh, just so you know, I'm very, very thankful for her and what she does. Uh, glad they're here with us. Uh, Rob, I see you. As, uh, Rob, and, and he is married with a uh, sweet little daughter uh, named Emma. And I think we have met them and seen them here. They're from Gloucester Street and Ripley Church of Christ. Uh, Rob is an electrician with Challenge Automation. He actually does a lot of work uh, where I work at Toyota. And Jessica is a hospice nurse with uh, Kindred Hospice. Drew. Mr. Bruce. All right. Drew's been here about a year now, right? A year and a half. Uh, he comes to us from Sherman Church of Christ. Unfortunately, Drew put down as his notes, he's employed in construction. He didn't say anything about Katie Williams. He didn't say anything about his significant other. We will work on that, Drew, as I try to, uh, as, as I try to take care of you. Vicki Johnson Hopkins. Larry, I got you next. You stay seated. Right, Vicki, you could stand up a little longer than that. Uh, she is the mom of three and three grandchildren. She comes through us from Foot Street Church of Christ. Been there for 22 years. Uh, she works at Northeast as a medical assisting technology program instructor and director. And she did put on here that she's kin to Joel and uh, Mary Ellen Johnson and cousins of Sue and Ray Mason. So just like the rest of you, she's kin to them. Um, I'm just kidding. That's a joke as well. Um, but anyways, we're thankful she's here. Then we have Larry. Hey, Larry. Larry, we are so glad you are here. He too comes to us from Foot Street uh, Church of Christ. Says here he participates in Special Olympics. He loves to eat and socialize, and he loves his dog radar. He is always ready and willing to help anyone. And then I think Vicky helped him out on this. It says, and he loves his sister Vicky unconditionally. <laughs> All right. And then we have Mr. Ernie and Miss Evelyn Fouts. Now, they're probably some of the newest that showed up. And I think some of you know this, but they are from Bertha, Minnesota. Uh, Ernie is retired from the hardwood lumber business. Uh, Ernie has been active in preaching and teaching while Evelyn has taught Sunday school and is now interested in our benevolence and prison ministries. The thing that interests me the most about them is they came and scouted Boonville, last year for a day or two or a week, I don't know how long, and then just decided to pick up here Riesland and move here. And I asked them today, how's it been going? And they say it's been wonderful. Uh, thankful for them being here and thankful for the connections that we've been able to make with them. All right, Rita Grimes, are you here? Just left. Okay, all right, sorry. Uh, she comes from Hills Chapel. She, Rita's a retired nurse. She's also cousin of Sue and Ray Mason. Uh, Melissa Faulkner and Brian, are y'all here this morning? No, you got you can't just raise your hands. You got to... Oh, they're mine. Fine. All right. So Melissa's in the back. Uh, her Brian, uh, Brian is her son. They come from Snowdown. Melissa's empo employed with SCP Polymers. Rogers Clan, y'all are spaced out. Would y'all please stand, Rogers Clan? Stacy, come on. Here, blah, blah, blah. That, there we go. All right. Uh, we got Stacy and her sons, Corey. Garrett, Connor, and then her daughters, Michaela and um, Arlena Rogers. They're from Corinth, Mississippi. Y'all know Stacy is now our custodian here. I think the most interesting point is that she has five kids five years apart. <laughs> Whitley Miles, are you? Whitley's in the top. Uh, Whitley, was Whitley was smart enough to put on here that he is engaged 
and to be married to Bailey Beard. So he's smart enough, Drew, to put that on here. And their marriage is going to take place July the 14th at Boone's Camp. If anybody wants to know, I think Bailey told him to put that on there. Uh, and Whitley is employed in construction in New Albany. Alex and Hannah, are y'all here this morning? They're not here? Okay. I think most of us know them. Alex just graduated with his doctorate. He and Hannah both are employed at Downs Family Dentistry. Diana Robinson. Oh, sorry. Um, Diana helps with caring cooks and attends Lady Bible class um, when her health allows. I'm so glad she's here this morning and we can recognize her. Karen Stewart. Okay. Uh, she's from Fraley's Chapel. She's retired from Quartet. Uh, it says here where she worked with Adrian Edge, Gay Rowland, and Dee Worley. I don't know if Alex, I know Alex has to work a lot on Sunday mornings. Uh, Alex Duncan, which uh, he grew up at this congregation. He did worship at Hillcrest at some time. He works at Walmart. Jamie Hutchins. Oh, yeah. Hey, Jamie. Uh, Jamie collects Indian artifacts and is the son of Marilyn Martin. There you go. I knew I could get something from you, Marilyn. Thank you very much. All right, I'm on the last page, by the way. Trestle Lindley. I, they're pointing at you. Ah, there we go. Um, she's a previous member uh, that most of us know who's come back uh, to worship with us here in Boonville. She's moved back to this area. So glad of that. Shelby Owens. Ah, there you are in the middle. Um, also, a new convert we've had enjoys the Golden Circle activities. Uh, very good friends with Lisa and Hope Peak. Gene Kaiser. All right. Um, Arlington, Virginia. I think we know Gene's been kind of going back and forth between Virginia and Boonville for years, but she's back here, and we're so thankful for that. I don't see BJ sitting over here. Uh, BJ is also a new convert. Uh, he put on here he's friends uh, with McKaylee Owens uh, and family. And then Alan and Martha Caldwell in the back. Uh, they come to us from Zion Rest. Interesting point. We'll end with this one. Alan helped his uncle, Vance, hang the light fixtures that are above our heads today in this facility. All right. That uh, we introduced as many people as we could that we knew about uh, that have come to us since 2015, as we do this every year, I didn't count the number of names on here, but I would love for there to be more names this year than what there was in the past three that we recognize next year. Amen? I'm going to, at this moment, I'm going to bless the food, um, and then I'm going to ask, and we're going to do this, but I know this is going to be kind of difficult, and they're probably not going to. I'm going to ask those that we just recognized to get down and get up front or get up in front of us as we get our food. Also need to remember, next week, Mr. Morgan will be, is it Mr. Morgan? Will you be taking the pictures next week? All right, he'll have help. Okay, so next week, the people that I mentioned, we will take your picture, and then we will, of course, add those to our directory. So uh, please, I need to remind you of that. And then everybody else we will add later, Larry says, as uh, we try to organize uh, that. So uh, Dale's asked us to make sure our, these people that I just mentioned go first. Um, and then don't forget, after we eat, we're going to come back here at 1 o'clock. Do you have anything you need? You're okay? All right. I'm going to bless the food, and I'm going to bless uh, the families that we just mentioned. Bow your head, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we really are thankful for this day. Thankful for the time we have to worship you. Thankful for the great singing and lesson that we had here. The fact that we could honor you through the taking of the Lord's Supper. And the prayers that's been offered and now this one as well. We thank you for just so much. And we're thankful specifically at this moment for the families that have entered our lives here at Boonville. We're thankful for their dedication to you, their love for you, and the connections that they're making uh, with your people here in this congregation. And Father, we just pray that you'll continue to bless them and bless us and bless us as a congregation as we try to connect with you together with one another so we can all go to heaven and bring so many others with us. Father, we also want to, in this prayer, thank you for the food that we're about to eat. We thank you so much for the hands that have prepared so the meal and the, and the food that we're going to partake of. 
Help it nourish our bodies and help us glorify you in everything that we do. We love you so much. And it's in Christ's name we humbly pray. Amen.